All right, piece of the 12, title of this lesson is Facts Over Family, man. Straight like that, man. And we're going to find out what I mean by facts. I mean the truth, man. All right, of course. Now, let's look at this word fact. Known to be true. That's the word we're going to, that's what we're going to focus on in this definition. Known to be true. Something that has actually occurred, right? In reality. All right, so it's facts over family, man. A lot of family members, you know, whatever the case may be, it might be your wife, it might be your son, it might be your brother, it might be your mama, it might be your grandma, whoever, man. Hey, if they don't get with the program of understanding who they are and what's to come and, uh, you know, turning back to the most, to serving the most high, turning back to serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father who is ignorantly called God. Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel that's ignorantly called Jesus Christ. They don't want to give it that program, man. Hey, you got to get away from it, man. Because what's going to happen? What's going to happen is they're going to pull you down, man. I'm not saying that you, you have to cut off all communication with them. I'm just saying, man, if they're trying to, if they trying to get you to sin for them, hell no, nah, man. Straight like that, lock. All right, let's get Romans 3 and 4. We know that the scriptures are the true truth, man. Let's get Romans 3 and 4. Actually, I'm going to get it started at 3. Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Of course not, man. So if some people don't believe this word, some people don't believe this truth, who gives a damn? Romans 3 and 4. God forbid, yeah, let God be true. Let God be true, but every man a liar, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged, man. Straight like that. All right, so we don't give a damn, man. We know this is the truth, man. Don't let somebody try to coerce you to trim, let me get that scripture, to trim your ways, man. You know it's the truth, and now you got somebody trying to trim your ways, man. Let's get Jeremiah 2 and 33. I think that's it. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love, man? Why the hell would you try to water down the truth, try to dilute the truth, try to damn, damn mix oil with water uh, for the sake of love? Therefore, as thou also taught the wicked one thy ways, man. All right, don't ever trim your ways, man. I don't give a damn who it is. All right, you understand? People got people got to learn that man, cause hey, this your soul on the line, it's your life on the line, man. This is this is this is eternity on the line, man. Understand, this is your immortality in the line. All right, and we know the Lord, we know the scriptures are true. Let's get Proverbs thirty and five. Every word of God is pure; He is a shield unto them that pure that put their trust in Him. So every word is pure. What's this word pure mean? Pure. To purify, cleanse, pure, clear. Uh, you see that? Clear. Free from moral corruption. That goes back to that oil water. Here you as you have the divine oil within your body. You want people to water you down, man. Dilute it. Hey, man. Hey, I give a damn about that, man. Unalloy. You see gold. See, of gold, pure. There's no other metals within it, man. All right. You're going to be tried through the fire. See, I like how I use this word gold because we're going to be tried through the fire as gold, man. And those that are left, hey, those are the ones that's going to make it out of here. All right, so it's facts. Over down, over family, man. You got to sanctify yourself. You got you to gotta wash away all the impurities, man, and be pure, right? And let me get another word for pure. Pure. Uh, where was it at? Unadulterated. Without, f free from moral corruption. With l a lamb without blemish. You see that? That's what we're trying to get. We're trying to be. We're trying to become lambs without blemish, man. When our Savior returns, Ephesians five and twenty six and twenty six. How do we become lambs? We have to be purified through the Word, through Ephesians five and twenty six. That He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. All right, so this Word washes away, man. It washes away all impurities, man. That's the whole point. You gotta wash it out. You gotta, you gotta, die. you gotta um, clean yourself. 
so that you may become blameless, man. You can't let nobody take away your crown, like the scripture says. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let's get that real quick. Revelations 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown, man. Exactly, you can't let nobody take away your crown, man. I don't give a damn who it is, man. I don't give a damn how long you knew somebody. I don't give a damn what the situation is, man. You choose, it's always your how about shimmy, I was shy over every damn body, man. All right, that's just that's just how it is, man, because that's, that's the spirit of how the Lord is moving. I'm going to get that in this scripture. Matthew 19 and 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life, man. Alright, so if you forsake all if you gotta forsake all that stuff, man, hey, good riddance, man. Nice knowing you, man. Straight like that. What's this word forsake mean? Forsaking houses, man. And all that. What's that word forsake mean? Object, oppose, deny, to give up, man. Give it away, man. Give it up completely. You hear me? That's that's what it means, man. Forsake. You gotta give up these things completely, man. And I'll give you an example of what you gotta forsake. This is just one example of many. Like the damn holidays, man. These wicked ass holidays. Look at this damn Christmas tree. A Christmas tree. And this is how you know the Lord ain't dealing with this, man. That's what this is how you know. Uh, the Israelites got the truth because this you listen to this Christmas tree, right? It talks about German Protestant Christians and Christian and Christmas and the Lord ain't dealing with damn Christmas, man. Let's get Jeremiah 10 and 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. And that's exactly what they do, man. They damn, they damn deck the halls with all that madness like that damn song. They fast it with nails so it moves. They bring it into their house. What am I talking about? This damn Christmas tree, man. You got to forsake that. I know a lot of people be like, and then your parents or whoever, man, your family might be like, oh, we used to do that. You remember when remember we used to run and do this and you had to get your, your pops to get the star and put it on the tree. Hey, I don't give a damn about that, man. All right, I don't give a damn about this old life, man. You gotta be a new person. You gotta be born a new a creature. That's why the scriptures say what. Let me get that. Let's get that real quick. Let's get John three and three. Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God, man. So when we born again, there's no remembrance of the form. There's no remembrance of the form of things. There's no remembrance of this, man. To hell with this, man. All right, you gotta you gotta walk away from this, man. You have to walk away. All right, and that's just one example of many things that you have to forsake in order to make it, man. Let's get Matthew twelve and fifty. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven. The same as my brother and sister and mother. That's right, man. Your true family are those that hearken and are sincere in following the teachings of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man. Following the Bible, coming back to being Israelites, man. Those are your true family, man. Your true brother, sister, and mother and father, man. All right. We serve the Heavenly Father, man. All right. This is your true family. An exceeding great army as it states, man. And uh, Ezekiel. All right, this, this these are these are the brethren, man, the real brothers, man. Understand? All right, and guess what? When you do this stuff, you you are going to become uh, you are going to become unknown. You're going to become an alien. All right. Look at this, Psalm sixty nine and eight. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children, man. So he's become an alien unto my mother's children. Exactly, man. People are going to start seeing you as an alien. Because you don't do this shit no more. Hold on. You don't do this shit no more, man. So you're going to be looked at as an alien. But that's okay, man. Because like I said, don't give a damn. All right? They're going to start looking at you like this. Like you damn Electro. You walking around all these different people. 
and then you, you know you're different you got that you got power man you got powers powers given to you and bestowed to you before the foundation of the world man through predestination all right powers given to you by your how about shame i was shot man all right all right so that's just how it is man let's get another scripture man because these words are faithful and true because the lord is faithful and true as it tells you in John, the first chapter in the 14th verse, man, Yahweh Shai represents the word made flesh. So if you believe in Yahweh Shai, you believe in the word. So all these people that say they don't believe in Yahweh Shai, guess what? They don't believe the Bible. Man. Just put, that's, it, that's it, man. Let's get Revelations 19 and 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, man. All right, and when it says a name that no one knew, that means a reputation that no one knew. Like you, like when people say you make a name for yourself, because we know that the Lord's name is Yahweh Shai. All right, that's why later it says what? His name is called the Word of God. But anyway, man, yeah, uh, he's faithful and true. Like I said, all these words that are written, everything written is faith is faithful and true. All right. Yahweh Shai is coming back, man. And you're either on his side or you're on his enemy. But we'll see what happens to his enemy, man. Let's see what let's see what happens to the enemies of the Lord. It don't matter who it is. This is what's coming into a theater near you, man. Luke 19 and 27. Let's get it. Luke 19 and 27, these are the words of the Lord. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me, man. All right, so you just, you you either going to get down or you're going to lay down, man. All right, that's why it's up for people to get down with this program right now, man. Because the, 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 the gates of mercy are shutting, man. All right. The doors to make it in are shutting. If you get shut out, man, you know, it's your ass, man. It's lights out. Ain't nothing nobody can do for you understand that so where we at where we at man yeah man this man's coming back believe it or not like i said for what if some don't don't believe it like i said in romans 3 and 3 all right let's get john 1 and 14 this is kind of what i just stated yes yahweh is the word made flesh john 1 and 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Exactly, man. Full of grace and truth. All right. And the word was made flesh. Understand that. Like I already stated. All right. Let's get Mark 10 and 30. All right. And, th and check this out, man. This is how we're going to get out of here. Or this is what we're going to receive if we forsake everything that we have, man. Mark 10 and 29. And Yahweh shall answer and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters, mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. All right, so if you forsake all that you have, man, you will receive a hundredfold, man. You might have had a large family, man. You might have been cool with a lot of people. Hey, but guess what, man? Like I told you in the beginning, this is how about you, man? I was shy over everything, man. That's just it, man. And you're going to receive a hundredfold, a crown of life, and immortality. All right, you understand? You're going to get that crown of life. I'm going to end it with this. Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, man. So you be faithful unto death, you get a crown of life, man. Don't give a damn about none of that other stuff, man. Like I told you, man. It's your how about Shemel Shah over everything. Don't abuse this world, man. All right, and with that, I say peace to the twelve. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to your how about Shemel Shah. All right. Shalom to those doing this work in truth and sincerity. I'm gone.